See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he's lying. He's gonna lie. You be a vessel that God is working. Because you somebody might need your holy prayer to save them when they We will be able to apply what we hear. And Father, that will help us create a memory that will be automatic and it will be a being of excellence that you called us to. Guide us through this teaching. Guide us through this revelation so that we all will arrive there together. Amen. Amen. You know, I have two things in my mind that I want to talk about. One, I want to continue with this projection because projection is very important. But the problem with going from Saturday to Saturday is there's seven days in between. Mm -hmm. And the seven <laughs> days in between, the Spirit of God is still teaching me, teaching me some things. And I just want to share those things that we're teaching. I, I do want to, I do want to uh, because of conversation, uh, my wife and I had a very good conversation uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, we were talking about how people think. And I'm not I'm talking about the traditional person. I'm not talking about people who come into uh, this kind of gathering, and this is the only thing that they know. They don't have the same challenge. What we have is people who have been in church settings before, and by being in those church settings before, they've heard things that they have adopted as their truth. Now, in adopting these things as their truth, they may not have always gotten the result that they desired when they were operating in faith, quote unquote. So, I'm going to operate in faith. I want to. I'm believing God for this. I'm going to make these types of confession because I believe if I make these kinds of confession, I will get my desired result. Okay. So, my challenge as a pastor for the last 27 years as leading the work. I've, I've seen hit and misses. I've seen people who actually recovered from prayer and from statements of faith. I've seen people not recover at all. And I know that God is not a wishy-washy God. He's not uh, uh, partial. He's not picking and choosing. Oh, you're going to make it and you're not going to make it. And I'm teaching you through pain and I'm teaching you through joy. That's not the way that God is. Now, this journey started some, some time ago for me because... I started asking God, why is there such contradictions in the Bible? That's my private conversation with God. Like, like the word, this is the word of God. This is the only thing that I know to be God's word. So in knowing that this is God's word, why do I see God portrayed in two different lights? I see him as a punitive God, and I see him as a merciful God. Then I, I, grow, I grow up. And I see that God is the Word incarnate in the flesh, and the incarnation is, a, is, is Jesus Christ, all right? The incarnation of God is Jesus Christ. So now, that means this is God fleshed out. So if I want to know what God is, I don't have to, to, to have some imaginary being. Here is a being fleshed out. This is God. This is the mind of God. And so when we start looking at Jesus, I see the consistency. I hear him say, me and my father are one. I don't say anything unless I, I hear my father say it. I don't do anything unless I see my father do it. Now I'm seeing a consistency. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm growing up in this over the years, and I'm pastoring at the same time. So this is the dilemma of growing up and pastoring. Because when you make changes, Sometimes you change, and you, like you're going this way, you obviously you change and go that way. Well, the people following you are still going that way, and they don't like to make the change because what we do is become very comfortable, and comfort is not growth. There's no comfort in growth. And if you're going to grow, you're going to have, and, and change is definitely not comfortable, but there is some enlightenment to it, okay? It may not be familiar, but there is some enlightenment to it. And one of the things that God wants all of us to do is be enlightened. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the light. Amen. So keep on searching, keep on searching, keep on reading some things and, and, and observing. 
teaching young men. That's another good thing that I had to do. I, I got to teach young guys, particularly. And women are so, women are such a blessing. Uh, women are just supportive and deep and they get it really quick, you know. Uh, guys, we're more analytical. You, you got to deal with our brain. We got to understand it. And so we come with a lot of questions. I mean, we don't just want to accept truth, you know, like women said, this is my man of God and I trust him and that's it. Guys said, this is my man of God and I'm going to check him out everything, by everything he do. I'm going to watch how he dress. I'm going to watch his mannerisms. I'm, I'm going to check the dude out to see if I want to continue to follow him. And so we, we come in a different, we come in a, at, at leadership as a, at, at a different view. And so training men and teaching men, uh, there were some additional questions that I didn't get that caused me to go get an answer because I don't like questions that I don't have an answer for. So like I go back and I get some questions answered. And I'm a how-to guy. I'm not just the guy to give you information. I'm the guy that wants to give you the information and teach you how to do it, okay? Which brings me to my notes today that's a little off of what we were talking about. Now, uh, so the how-to is how do we change our state of being? Because one of the problems that we have is our being. People say that we are human beings. Well, we're not just human beings. We're divine beings in a physical body. So and that's, that's our eternal habitat. That's who we are. It, it never changes. But because we're in this, these five senses, which are extremely limited, we have to do things by faith. I want to say it again. We have to do things by faith. It's not by the senses because the senses cannot contact our spiritual being. All our senses do is tell us about our physical being, okay? Our worldly consciousness uh, through the five senses. Then we shape personality and character and tendencies and habits and so forth and so on in this. But none of those things that we shape in this follow us outside of this. Because none of those things outside of this is necessary. Amen. Now, another key is Jesus is not accepting the world as it is. He's not upset with the earth. It's, it's the world that's on the planet that's governing men through the senses that is, that's being replaced. Okay? So, so how do we live in our future selves today? Oh, that's, that's what I'm after. So here you're going to see, state of being, I don't know if you can see it up here, but I'll read it for those who can't see it. The, the neurochemical relationship between the brain and the body. Now, I'm not going to get it, because there's a lot of stuff to go before this that I don't want to make this a science class. Okay, so, but there's a whole bunch of stuff happening with us. One of the things that I discussed last week at, at, in the L.A. church, I discussed the fact that uh, we all made up of atoms. Everything is made up of, of an atom. Chair, you sitting on the light. Everything is made up of an atom. So when we dis, when we go in, dive into what makes up an atom, we have all these other n names, neutrons, protons, and all that kind of stuff. But when we really get into the atom itself, to the core of the atom, we notice that that nine nine point nine 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 percent of an atom is gas. Okay then 0.0001% is particle or something solid. So the atom is basically made up of nothing in percentage. It's basically nothing. It's 9.99999% of nothing. And we are made up of nothing. Okay, the part, and it's, the, it's this one percent that we seem to be concentrating on, and I believe that what God is communicating to us in this study is the fact that you're more spiritual than you are carnal, but you pay too much attention to this than you do of your true makeup. You are nine nine point nine 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 percent spiritual, and zero point zero zero zero. 1% natural. And we're spending most of our thought on our natural and not taking care of our spiritual being who we really 
are. <laughs> okay, so now, by that, that means you can influence your natural being if you learn how to operate and function in your spiritual being. Okay, all right? So that's why we use some of this terminology so that we can learn. And the, I'm saying, all of what I'm saying is in the Word. And it's not hidden, but the, we, because we have not been taught to think properly, we don't see it. And so when we look at the Word, we come away frustrated instead of inspired. Inspired, okay? I want to try to make that rhyme, but it didn't work. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, here we go. So the neurophysical relationship between the brain and the body. As you think certain thoughts, the brain produces chemicals that cause you to feel exactly the way you were thinking. Once you feel the way you think, you begin to think the way you feel. This continuous cycle creates a feedback loop called a state of being. For example, we say, I have always been lazy. I am, I, I am an anxious person. I am typically uncertain <clears throat> of myself. Now, for those of us who have been seated under my teaching, we recognize immediately the I am. Because that's God's name for you, and that's one of the most powerful names you have. Whenever you say I am, that's what you become. So you, don't, you better watch the I am's. It's holy and it's sacred. So don't be talking about I am sick and I am broke. And we go, well, hey, praise, you ain't going to change just because you want to. I don't feel like being broke, but I'm broke. You're counseling out your blessing, okay? All right, so I am typically uncertain of myself. I have, I have uh, worthless issues. I am short-tempered and impatient. I am really not that smart. And so on and so on and so on. And those particular memorized feelings contribute to all our personality traits. Because when you say this, it releases a chemical and you begin to feel what you say. If I am lazy, you're going to feel lazy. <laughs> if, if I am smart, you're going to feel smart. If I am t and your body is going to help you maintain this loop of being. You would try to be energetic. You're trying to read or you're trying to study. But you have already have a base belief about yourself memorized that you're lazy. Oh, that's not interesting to me. I am not in. So whatever you have already hypnotized yourself in doing, you release chemicals. And your body is, is on, the, on those chemicals addiction. It is addicted. Like we know about adrenaline addic addiction. But any kind of addiction, lazy addiction, Depressed, you're you're an addict to being depressed mm -hmm. because of what you think. Mm -hmm. hey. yeah. Warning: When feelings become the means of thinking, or if we cannot think greater than how we feel, we can never change. To change is to think greater than how we feel. To change is to act greater than the familiar feelings of the memorized self. As a, per, as a practical uh, example, let's say you're driving to work this morning and you begin to think about the heated encounter you had a few days ago with a coworker. As you think the thoughts associated with that person and that particular experience, your brain starts releasing chemicals that circulate through your body quickly. You begin to feel exactly the way you were thinking. So by the time you get there, you already got an attitude. <laughs> now, you left this morning, you got up in the morning, you were feeling good, you're driving to work, and then you started thinking, oh, on Friday, me and so-and-so, we got into it. And they were da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. You playing that thing back in your mind over and over again, and by the time you get there, you are ready. Uh, you are ready. You revved up. How did you get that way? Your memory. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a problem that, that, that I'm trying to help people, including myself, is break the past. Break the past. Anything that is five minutes ago is not worth my imagination. 
You know, there's an illustration scientist that has done these illustrations, and one is either a gazelle or any animal that's grazing that has a predator. As that animal is grazing, they are per perfectly rested. They are rested. And nothing is going on. The heart rate is, is not up. But let's say this is a gazelle and, and, and this rested, and through the, the comes a female lioness. And, and, and this gazelle got some hearing, because that's her protection. She can hear well. Head goes up, danger, danger. And then she hears that line, boom, she's gone. And that lioness is after her. And just this particular occasion, she has a couple of moves. She got laid out, and she gets away from the lioness. All right, the lioness decided not to chase her, get an easier prey, whatever. She is not worried about that lioness. No more. It's gone. The threat is gone. And 15 minutes after the chase, her heart rate is back to normal. Her heart rate is back to normal. Humans don't have that. We have fight or flight. And the same thing like the gazelle, our heart rate goes. It releases chemicals. But the same thing can happen in a memory. You can remember an encounter. It re you're not in it, but you remember it. And your body don't know that it's a memory and not reality. And the stress is what your body cannot take. Your body is not made to take stress on a continual basis. And we are always stressed about something. We always, and, we, and, and the reason that we're stressed is based on past experience. See, you already decided, well, I've been here before. I, you know, the same symptoms happened before. So I can pretty much predict what's going to happen. And so now you begin to worry. You do the same thing with bills. You do the same thing with time. You do the same thing with everything. You stress, 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 stress. And so one of the things we need to do is divorce ourselves from stress and anything that will push the button of stress. Mm -hmm. Now, this should weaken your addiction to news. <laughs> because the news is not you. Unless you're making the news, you really don't need to know the news. Because as you're visualizing the earthquakes, as you're visualizing the murders, as you're visualizing the families that have been affected by tsunamis, your body don't know you're not in that. But your feelings release chemicals of stress and worry and concern, and these chemicals deteriorate your physical makeup. Are, are y'all listening to me? And say, now this bounds up in pressure on the inside. It has to come out some way. So it comes out as high blood pressure. It comes out as cancer. It, come, it, it comes out of different kind of things because you don't know how not to stress. So it ain't the devil. Oh, I rebuke the, the devil. It ain't the devil. It's us. Amen. Because the word says, if, you know, you want to talk about the devil. The, the word says resist. <laughs> and you will what? Flee. He ain't even got to fight. Renew your mind. Anything that rises up in your mind that's contrary to the will of Christ, capture that thing, cast it down, and replace it with another thought. Amen. Amen. All right. So y'all learned something so far. Yeah, yeah, sure. The next thing I want to point out in this conversation is we have made positive confessions before. You know, we, 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 we done been through this positive confession kind of thing, you know. I've been, I've been around a long time, you know, 64 years old. I've been in church ever since I was, I don't know, forever. And, and I can't remember a day of my life not being in church. Same thing with that man back there. We was, we church, we all, we was, we was in diapers sitting in church. Scared to use the diaper because we make our mad, mama mad because she had to go change it, so we just kept everything in control. We got to sit in church. Can't be a distraction in church. But anyway, praise God. So, so you know, I've been in church all the time. So I, we've heard all of the, we've been through all the cycle of church growth 
I'm not new to it. I've been through it all the, all along. And I started teaching the Bible when I was te been a teacher, actually, when I was 12 years old. So I've been doing this a long time. So, so and I'm not, that don't mean anything. It's just that I've been here asking questions. But that's all I'm saying. I've been here asking questions a long time. And so I, I'm going to tell you, if you keep asking questions, God will give you an answer. He's not keeping no secrets from you. Amen. And no question puts him off. He don't really care what you ask. You might not like the answer, but he's going to give you the answer to all your questions. <laughs> Amen. So I've heard it. We've been through. Let's, 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 let's memorize some scripture and let's confess the scriptures that we've memorized. Like, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm, I, I, I pray for people that, that says, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed and died. That concerns me because God doesn't lie. You know, I prayed for people that says, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, and have some sickness, disease, or malady, and still live with that. That bothers me. I know so some people don't say that. Some preachers don't say that. Some people put it off on you and say, oh, you just didn't have enough faith. That person had enough faith. You didn't have enough faith. You should have more faith. Ba -da ba 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 Well, let me tell you something. You can't have faith for what has not already been given to you. See, faith don't create nothing. Faith is in response to what is already yours. See, grace has given you everything, and you have faith that grace has already given it to you. That's why you have faith for it. A lot of people, oh, I have faith for a new car. Well, if grace hasn't given you a new car, you're not going to drive off with the one you want. Amen. You know, people out there putting out there, well, I didn't get what I want. But no, you settled. Because most people don't know this. The desire for whatever you want, I don't care if it's a Rolls Royce, sweetheart, and I don't give a care about where you are financially. If that's your desire, that's what you will have. It don't set God back one minute. There ain't no such thing as thinking too high. How can you think higher than God's promises? Amen. That's, that's the most ridiculous crap, excuse me, most ridiculous thing that ever come out of church. You thinking high. You, have, you don't have the capacity. You don't have the mentality to think higher than God's promises for you. Amen. Amen. Not one of your thoughts ever threaten him. Try it. <laughs> Try it. Try desiring something. So that's why she would desire one thing and she would desire something else because God gives both of these women the desire of their heart mm -hmm. and each of them will have their desire, mm -hmm. though it's different. Mm -hmm. And some of us through religion talk ourselves out of our desires. Oh, you just think, you know, family is really the worst thing for this. Oh, hmm, you think you such a much. <laughs> you worse off than a crippled crab without a crutch. <laughs> Somebody told me that. Well, that's what I know that. You know, you told me you think you such a much. Yeah, I am. I am. I am exactly what God created me to be. I'm no less than what God has created me to be. And so God created me to have these desires, and I'm not ashamed of my desires, seeing that they can, that it's not evil. It don't harm you. Amen. Come on now. Praise, praise God. So we got to learn how to stay liberal, liberated in our desire and in our thinking because God gives you. So you can't have, faith don't make up stuff. Faith don't make up stuff. You don't make up something that you don't have. I'm believing for a house. Well, you already have one. You're believing. I don't care if it's strong or weak. If it's not in your grace then you, don't, you won't get it. But if it's in your grace, which means it's in your desire, then, th then they be careful that you don't let somebody else's desire be yours. And that's where you get in trouble, when you're trying to believe on somebody else's blessing. No, you stick with your own. All right? So your desire is your desire, and you, God has given you grace, and we're saved by grace, what? Through faith. See, it's grace first. Grace is a gift, and faith just uh, and situates the gift that's already ours. So when you dream, go for it. Break the pattern. Break the pattern of not having by going for your dream. Your dream is leading you out of the pattern of failing. Because the failure is not from God. Oh, uh, y'all don't, don't know when to say amen. Amen. So now, my, my thing is, how do we break the pattern of, of this rut that we're in like a hamster that keep running around and keep having the same experiences over and over again. Amen. So let's go. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Now, verse 14 says, I press forward. Now, now um, we have preached, I'm in the, at least I know I've done this, I preached, I'm in the press. I'm in the press as though there's some type of pressure stopping me from going forward. All right? We're not in a press because the only pressure we have is us. It's called discipline. Most of us don't have no discipline. All right? So it says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I, I, I'm disciplined to move toward the goal. See, now there has to be a goal, all right, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. God has given you a vision. So you're going to be disciplined to keep that vision before your eyes and do what's necessary, i.e., the reason that we're doing the course in miracles. Because in the course in miracles, it asks us, especially the, the student's workbook, to do certain things and think certain ways during the time of day. So think about this, think about that during the time of day. Do it every hour. Now, I'm, I'm at where they want me to do five minutes every hour. Now, I don't know where you guys are, but do five minutes every hour. Now, there will always be something in your life that you will not be able to remember those five minutes every hour. See, the course is trying to train you how to discipline your thought. And whenever something replaces that five minutes of concentration, that thing that replaced it, you value as more important. Because you lose sight of why the discipline is in place. Oh, come on now. And then your ego will remind you you didn't do it. Now you're going to feel guilty. Bad feeling. You know, never to be guilty. All you do is just correct it. Don't ever accept guilt. Guilt is not from God. You don't need guilt. You don't need guilt. One more time. You are the child of God. You don't need no guilt. Child of God, don't accept guilt. All right? You know who you are. You ain't going to ever be guilty. All right? Now. So, so, but it, it, but it never quits. It keeps giving you and encouraging you to, to discipline your thought life, to discipline your thought life. Amen. So let's go to Philippians chapter 4. And let's take a look at 4. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to make some comments about it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yay! Now, in, in, in one, uh, let's look at verse 6. Because here's the key. Now, I was talking about how people confess, 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 confess. Here's the key. Be anxious for nothing. That's number one. Number two, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Oh, I love I felt in love with this again because it says pray with feelings. <laughs> Supplication means all feelings, not only all prayer, but all your feelings. Now, but we got to look at prayer differently because you're not praying because you think you don't have something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're praying because you see you got it because you got a vision. And you're supposed to look at it until you feel it. Oh, y'all don't understand. See, like, when, when God show you something, you're supposed to keep on thanking him for it until you feel it. You're supposed to keep on thanking him for it until you get in part and you have accepted it. Because this is true. Every experience you ever had in your life 
that had some ex some feelings behind it, you do ne you never ever forget. Amen. Because because of a feeling, like a lot of men and a lot of women remember the day and the place that they one the man proposed to the woman and two she was proposed to because that was some feelings behind that. They might forget a lot of stuff, but they remember. Oh, I know. We, we, were, we were at this restaurant. The, and, they, and women are even better than me because they know what it smelled like that day. <laughs> <laughs> they know the color. They know the bird tweet. They know everything. The guy know the place. You know, I remember I kneeled down. That floor was hard. <laughs> and she was told because there was feeling and emotion behind it. Whenever you have feeling and emotion, it creates an experience. When you create an experience, it, it changes your being because it releases chemicals inside of your body. Ooh. See, see, the way you break the rut, because when everything you think about the past, it has feelings about it. It has fear attached to it. it has, so you keep on going because you keep replaying those ruts over and over again. So what you do is forget about that rut and sort of face forward and say, no, 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 this is where I'm going. I'm going, I'm le I've left that behind, and I'm going forward, and I'm going to keep on looking at it, I'm going to keep on gazing at it, until I begin to feel it, until I begin to have an emotion about it. Now when I call those things that be not as though they were, because I've already accepted it as, it, as if it were, I'm already acting like it's true. Y'all get it? You know, I already, I'm already feeling like it, I'm already, I've already accepted it, so I'm looking and talking like it's true. I'm not talking like it's coming. I'm talking like I got it. Amen. 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 I got it. I, you know, see, if, it, if it's coming, I ain't got it. But if I got it, I've got received it. You know, if you pray and receive what you pray for, you have it. So you got to already lay hold to it. I got this. You have to see it before you ever get it. Amen. If you keep looking at the past, that's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get. You're not going to get nothing different. Amen? Amen. Come back. Come back. Thank you. All right. So now, uh, that's what we want to talk about. And that's what we want to encourage you with today. We need to change by changing what we're thinking about. Now again, if you haven't started the course, I, I tell you start the course. Because it'll, it'll, it'll purify your mind. You know, you start saying, I am the light. I am strength. I am the child of God. When you start saying that about your I am's, it true, it just it, it changes what you think about yourself and it actually gives you the permission to dream. You think your way out of your circumstances. I know we want somebody to come rescue us, but we didn't get in it that way. But we get out of it a lot faster. We get out of our circumstances a lot faster because wisdom is ours and wisdom will constantly bathe us in these things. All right? I know I'll, I'll, I'll deal with guilt later on. But I, I sense that I've given you enough uh, now. So take with you for the day into the, our next meeting. People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. NCCFC.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. NCCFC